milk is one of our most wholesome foods it is an important item in the diet of people who live in the united states and canada as well as other countries throughout the world it is especially good for the health of young children Most of our milk comes from cows, whose bodies provide milk for their young calves. However, people use much more milk than calves do. Most milk cows today are kept and milked by dairy farmers, who earn their living by selling milk. Now, where are the milk cows and the dairy farms of the United States located? These dots give an idea about where the milk cows are scattered throughout the states on various types of farms. These dots show the location of dairy farms. Half the cows on these farms live in an area commonly called the dairy belt, where dairy farming is the most important agricultural activity. This dairy belt is partly in Canada. Conditions that aid milk production include good care, protection in barns from extremely hot and extremely cold weather, and large amounts of fresh, clean water. Water must be available to the cows wherever they are, in the barn, in the lot just outside the barn, and in the pasture. A condition that is most important for milk production is good feed. Cows need rough feed, such as pasture grass, hay, and silage. They also need concentrated feed. Concentrated feed is generally made by grinding together a balanced mixture of feeds, which usually includes corn and oats, and may include cottonseed, soybeans, peanuts, linseed, and minerals. Dairy farmers must buy the feeds they do not grow. However, they grow most of their own feeds because providing feed for cattle is about half the farm cost of dairying. Let us see how feed is provided on two dairy farms which are nearly 1,000 miles apart. We go first to central New York State to see a farm typical of that region, owned and operated by Mr. Calvin Roman. Its 160 acres of land are used mostly for crops and pasture. Mr. Roman has about 30 milk cows. The farm's milk goes to the New York City area, over 200 miles away, where it is sold as fresh milk. Grassland, which is used continuously for pasture, takes up about half the farmland. Most of this pasture is on land that is too rocky or too steep for planting in crops. Grasses help prevent slopes from eroding during heavy rains. The climate here is humid. The damp air and moderate temperatures of summer slow down evaporation of the soil's moisture, some of which comes from winter snows. With damp soil and moderate summers, the grass grows well. Pasture grass is an important and inexpensive source of cattle feed on the Roman farm. Now let's visit the other dairy farm. It is located in southeastern Wisconsin and is owned and operated by Mr. Ben Dibble. Mr. Dibble's farm is slightly smaller in acreage than Mr. Roman's New York farm, but it has a few more cows. Fresh milk from this farm is sold in Chicago, 100 miles away. As compared with the Roman farm, a much smaller amount of Mr. Dibble's land is in pasture. Except for the ungrazed marsh near the lake, Mr. Dibble's pasture land is usually drier. There is less rain and snow here. Melting snow often runs off frozen ground rather than soaking in. A larger part of Mr. Dibble's land is in crops, corn, hay, and oats, the three most important crops on all dairy farms. By raising more of these feed crops, Mr. Dibble is able to feed more cows with less pasture. The grain from oats is mixed with the concentrated feed during grinding. 
the stalks provide Mr. Dibble with straw to be used as bedding on the floor of his dairy barn. The straw is removed with the manure and spread upon the ground to decay. This decayed material becomes part of the humus in the soil, which makes the ground more fertile. The soil of the Dibble farm raises good crops. The large level fields are especially suited to the use of machinery. In spite of a short growing season, the climate is good for feed crops. The harvests of summer and fall, such as alfalfa hay, must be stored for feeding to the cattle in winter. When they gather the crops, Mr. Dibble's son, Art, is kept very busy when he is not in school. The most important crop on the dairy farms of southeastern Wisconsin is corn. Corn, sometimes grown with sorghum, is chopped while the ears are still soft and the stalks green. This green feed is then stored in a silo to be fed as silage. Most of the silage is used in winter when pastures are not available. Corn not used for silage is allowed to ripen. Then the ears are harvested as grain. Like oats, this corn is ground with the concentrated feed. Now let's return to the Roman farm in New York State. Because more of the land here is in pastures and woods, we find less land in crops. The crops, however, are the same as those on the Dibble farm, oats, hay, and corn. Of these crops, hay is the most important one on the Roman farm. Both farmers get at least two crops of hay during the summer. After Mr. Roman finishes cutting this field of alfalfa mixed with brome grass, he will allow it to dry before baling it. All of Mr. Roman's corn is cut for silage because he can buy shelled corn from the corn belt cheaper than he can raise it. On these farms, we have seen both similarities and differences in the ways that land is used to provide feed for cattle. Throughout the dairy belt, sanitation and cleanliness in barns and milk houses are of utmost importance. Many sanitary practices are required by the states and cities in order to protect the health of all who drink milk. Cleanliness on a dairy farm means work, and the Dibble family divides the chores. Before each milking, Mr. Dibble washes the udders of the cows. The cows are milked twice a day. After each milking, twice a day, Art Dibble cleans the floor, removing the manure and straw with the help of a mechanical conveyance. After each milking, the milk is stored in a cooling tank, and Mrs. Dibble washes the milking equipment. To be assured that milk is kept clean as it leaves the Dibble farm, it is pumped from the cooling tank through a hose into a refrigerated tank truck. A sample of the milk is taken daily to be examined for bacteria. In the milk house, the bulk cooling tank keeps the fluid milk fresh. Because milk will sour quickly when it is warm, it must be kept refrigerated and transported to market as quickly as possible. 
The cool climate of the dairy belt makes less refrigeration necessary. Prompt collection and delivery during winter months requires all roads to be kept free of heavy snow. When there is more fluid milk than needed, the surplus milk is made into manufactured products. Wisconsin has a greater surplus than New York. In some of these plants, the cream is separated from the milk and made into butter. The milk that is left has the water removed and the solids are sold as powdered milk. Other important manufactured products are cottage cheese and cheddar cheese. Plants in and near the larger cities make ice cream and they package the milk that trucks bring in. Most milk of the dairy belt is packaged in cartons and distributed as fluid milk. In the western part of the dairy belt that centers on Wisconsin, the Chicago-Milwaukee area is the largest market for fluid milk. Therefore, the closer areas produce mainly fluid milk. In areas farther away from the cities, much of the milk goes into cheese production. Cheese, a more concentrated food, is more valuable per pound than milk and can stand the greater transportation charges. About half of the cheese of the United States is made in Wisconsin. Still farther from the cities, an even more valuable product, butter, is made from much of the milk. Minnesota leads the United States in butter production. A much larger proportion of the milk produced in the western part of the dairy belt goes into manufactured products than in the eastern part. The dairy belt produces a number of other valuable farm products. These are poultry and eggs, meat animals, vegetables, and fruits such as apples, cherries, grapes, pears, and cranberries. Most of the people of the dairy belt live in cities, since the dairy belt and the manufacturing belt, in part, occupy the same area. The purchasing power of the people in these cities and suburbs makes possible the existence of the dairy belt. Most of the cities are growing larger and their suburbs are spreading rapidly over nearby farmland once used for dairying. Such land is valued at a price too high to make farming profitable. This land, now zoned for industry, was once a dairy farm. Until a few years ago, it was owned and operated by Mr. Dibble, who had lived here from birth. He sold this place and moved to his present farm when an interstate highway took part of the land and cut the farm in two. Dairy belt farmers are finding many ways to produce more milk on less land. They must do so if they are to stay in business and feed an expanding population. In the future, there will be fewer farms, but they will be larger in size and have more cows. <laughs>